Heavenly Father, we want to thank you. This is the day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it, Lord. We just want to thank you that we are alive. We are well. We want to thank you, Heavenly Father, for protecting myself and my husband, for giving us a brand new day, for blessing us with a brand new day. Many people didn't get the opportunity to see today, but you chose us. So we just want to thank you, Heavenly Father. We just want to commit this time that we're spending with you in your mighty hand. May your Holy Spirit take control, Heavenly Father. Fill us with your Spirit, Heavenly Father. As we're spending our time with you, we just pray for anyone that's going to stumble upon this video as well. We just pray that you will be with them, Lord. We pray that you will answer their prayers, Lord. We pray that they will get to feel your presence, Lord. We also just pray for those who are struggling with whatever issue, sickness, whatever it is, that just by listening to this worship, they will also be encouraged to worship. Before the Lord our God, we've come to bow. that we should come as we are so we come as we are heavenly father to bow before you you are worthy you are worthy only you is worthy only you is worthy you are worthy of our honor you are worthy of our praise you are worthy of our worship so we've come to bow we bring everything that we are our imperfections we bring all of our being to bow before your throne just like the 24 elders we've come to bow we've come to sing holy 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 is the lord god almighty the lord god almighty above all before the lord our god we've come to bow Come. 
to bow. I've come to bow. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Before the Lord, my God, I've come to bow.
I don't know if this was meant to be a worship session, but I just feel strongly in my heart. I don't know who needs to hear this, but I was having a conversation with my husband yesterday and we're talking about how sometimes our struggles, our issues, our annoyance, or just our everyday experience and things that we face every day can sometimes block us to worship or come to God's presence and we just concluded that God really wants us to come as we are it's the posture of our heart that matters it's not what we're going through it's not what we face so sometimes even when we don't have any words just come before his presence and just make your own song Sometimes just come before his presence with everything that you're facing and just stay in his presence. I was just inspired as I was listening to my husband sing his own song to the Lord and I was just like, how many of us just come and just not sing any song that we know or any lyrics that we know, but we just bring ourselves, we bring ourselves as we are before his presence and just to, to lay down our burdens, who we are, our issues, everything that we're facing, we just lay it down as we are before him and just sing our own song of worship. It doesn't matter how that looks like. So whatever it is that you're going through, I don't know who you are, but I'm just encouraging you to bring everything that you're facing, all these things that you think are stopping you from coming to his presence, he's telling you, come as you are. Some of you don't know what we're dealing with. We don't know what you're dealing with. Everybody's got a problem. Everybody's got something that they're dealing with. But you should never, ever, ever allow that stop you from coming into God's presence. To sing your own song of worship. Because sometimes what we face is our motivation to understand that we only have one sovereign God that is above everything. And so your song of worship looks different to my song of worship. You know, and sometimes we worship through our pain, through everything that we're trusting God for, right? So I don't know what you're trusting God for, but I'm here to just tell you that in that state that you are, you can worship God through whatever you're going through. Just worship him. Lighting. 
in the darkness that is who you are we make miracle work promise keep light in the darkness my god my god my god we make miracle work promise keep light in the darkness my god that is who you are you are here healing every heart we worship you we worship you you are here you are turned the turning lives around again because God is turning someone's life around there is someone who's listening to us someone who's trusting God who's stuck in one position for a long time but God wants us to tell that person that he's turning their lives around so I want us to join our faith and believe God for that person because I feel that burden for that person to yourself so many years year after year year after year I say to myself I'm gonna start afresh I'm gonna start again the year ends things are still the same he's turning your life around he's turning
What's our favorite verse again? Do you want to tell? Oh. God makes everything. Oh, works together for good. No, in everything God makes. In everything, God works for the good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Romans 8.28. <laughs> so, in everything, regardless of what you're going through, regardless of what you're experiencing, regardless of what the devil is trying in everything God is making it work for your good even when we mess up even when we're doing something we're not supposed to do but God will actually turn it around and he will make it work for our good because we love him and we're called according to his purpose Romans 8 28 so that person I don't know who you are but my heart feels such a heavy burden for you and you've been saying to yourself, oh, but I've wasted so many years. I know, I know this might be a new year and I know God can work this year. But I've wasted so many years in one place. Listen, all these years that you have been, you've been telling yourself that it's wasted. God is telling you that those years are going to make so much sense. Do you feel to say something? I think we have to remember that God is the king of redeeming stuff. He can redeem anything. There's nothing he cannot redeem. You know, Paul, he was, um, he was killing Christians. But even though he was killing Christians, he still wanted to use them. Sometimes we don't understand what it means to be chosen by God. God said that David was a king, was a person after his heart. But what did he do? He was sleeping with his best friend's wife and he got him killed. So we are not to decide what it means to be to be faithful and what it means to to lean into the calling uh, of God in our lives so we we are we are the ones disqualifying ourselves but God has never disqualified you God has never disqualified you he actually want to use you the thing is the very thing that you're going through is and and when you come out on the other side and you actually get your victory you are gaining a level of authority that no one else has. So that's the very thing that God want to use. But the devil is trying to tell us, because you've done that, you're not worthy. You're not good enough. But God is saying the exact opposite. Because you've done that, you've come out of it, I can use you to break it off other people. So you don't understand that this is where you have the most authority when you've broken off the thing in your life. God has broken it off because you want, he wants you to use it to help other people break the same thing off you're trustworthy because you have gone through it that's what actually qualifies you 
that's the very thing that qualifies you but the very thing that you think think is um unqualified disqualifying you is actually the thing that god says that is the very thing that qualifies you because you've come through and you've you've gone out on the other side you have the authority to help others come through the same thing even though if you haven't gone to that place yet um let's just pray for them that um god is the one giving you the strength to go through it what we have to realize what we have to realize is that God will never give you a challenge that you can't handle because he knows that you can handle it and guess what sometimes the size of the challenge is actually if you turn it upside down if God knows that you can handle it guess what if you're going through a challenge that you that seems too big you can take it as a compliment because God trusts in you he knows that you can handle it so the greater the challenge the more God trusts that you can go through it so he will reward you yeah but um yeah do you want to pray for them just to yeah i was just yeah i was just gonna say um just with everything that <laughs> this by the way <laughs> the holy spirit has its own agenda well, we're just too quick to get in the way because we think, oh, I'm not supposed to do that. So let me not do that. But guess what? God is a living God. The Holy Spirit is a living spirit that want to do living things. Sometimes traditions traditions, and what we used to do is, is what actually was coming in the way of what God wants us to do now. So because we get so used to doing things the way we did, the Holy Spirit can't move. In order for us to be obedient, we need to allow the Holy Spirit to do the unexpected. We need to allow the Holy Spirit to, to, to overrule our own agenda and, and our own system and own, you know, what we wanted to do. So that's what's happening right now. We didn't plan this. And if you ask us, we probably really didn't want to do this as well. I'm not feeling the best. I woke up telling my wife, I'm feeling a little bit sickish this morning. I'm claiming my healing. And regardless of how I'm feeling, I still have to obey the, the Holy Spirit. He's telling us to come on here and encourage you guys. Yeah, I was just going to say, just based on everything you've said, um, the enemy is really coming for us because he really wants to make you feel like what you're going through or what you've been through is just a waste of time. Like, you've just wasted your time. You're not good enough. You're not qualified. Look at what you did last year. Look at what you did the year before. Like, you've been doing the same thing all over, all over again and again. You're not good enough. He's using what God, <laughs> what God is actually using as, as something to make us grow, to make us learn, to make us feel like we're not good enough. So the plan of the enemy won't work. And how do we know that? We know that because we've learned it the hard way. We've seen things that, you know, the Holy Spirit has in, um, important us to do. But um, you feel... Yeah, you feel, you feel the ickiness in your spirit when you know you're supposed to do it, but you're failing to do it. So we're talking from experience. We're not, we're not saying that yeah, you guys and us guys, like it's all of us together. We were talking from experience and we've gone through it ourselves, which is why we've this. Yeah. So I just want to pray for your mind. Um, but you know what this tells me? We need to buy another microphone. <laughs> father we just want to pray for your children i do feel like there's one person here though i do feel like there's one person here that's going through this so i want to pray for everyone who can relate because we can relate as well um but i want to also pray for this specific person so heavenly father i pray for us as your children i pray that you continue to cover our minds and you continue to remind us that everything we, we go through even the choices that we make that are not your choices for us because you're not a dictator you give us a choice and sometimes we make choices that you know that we want fully knowing that it's not your ways but you use even the mistakes that we make to make it work for our good 
So we want to thank you for that. We want to thank you because you're a loving father. You're an amazing father. You're a good, good father. There's no one like you. We thank you. We want to pray for our minds, Lord. Because we know that the enemy is very busy trying to make us feel like we're failures. Trying to make us feel like we can't come before your presence. Reminding us that we failed you time and time and time and time again. And so we cannot come into your presence. I want to stand against that in the mighty name of Jesus. Because you are actually a loving father. You want us to come back to you. (laughs) You will leave the 99 to go and find the one. You will leave the 99 to go and find the one. You will leave 99 people to come and find me. That's how good you are. So I pray, Heavenly Father, that you will remind us how much of a good father you are. Remind us of situations that you've brought us through. Because the enemy wants us to focus on the things that don't go well. And sometimes we forget. There's so many other things that you have done for us that have worked well. So I pray that you will bring to remember us everything that you have done for us. And for that person that you've placed in my heart. Heavenly Father, I pray that you will cover her with your spirit. I pray that you will carry her in your arms and that she will feel your loving embrace, that she will feel your presence. Even as I'm praying now, Heavenly Father, I pray that she will feel your presence, that she will feel your love and she will be reminded, Heavenly Father, that you will make everything work together for her or him. I feel like it's a her. I pray, Heavenly Father, that from now on, the enemy will no longer have the power to attack her mind. The enemy will no longer have the power to attack her mind. Just like you've healed me from mental health issues or the things that I struggle with mentally, I also pray, Heavenly Father, that you will touch this sister, Heavenly Father, that you will remind her that you will make everything work well for her good. Even when she can't see it, or feel it, I want you to remind her that you are working. Heavenly Father, I pray that you will give her a sign every single day that you are working, that this is a process. We thank you.